California, Mr. Obernolte for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Swigel, uh, thank you for the update on the outlook. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the alternative policy solutions that you have examined in the outlook and how those fit into the long-term budgetary and economic outlook that the CBO issued a few months ago. Now, in the long-term outlook, if I uh, am recalling correctly, uh, you expressed some grave concerns that by the end of the forecast period on the path that we were on, that uh, net interest outlays would exceed 8% of GDP, would consume over half of all federal tax revenue, and that if interest rates increased in response to inflation, that would get much worse and, uh, and that sometime between now and then something would have to be done to get the deficit under control. Am I understanding that right? No, that's right. That the fiscal trajectory is, you know, is challenging now, but the longer we go, the further we go out, it gets worse. It gets more challenging. And we'll, we'll have another update of that of the thirty-year horizon um, later this summer. I'm hoping in July. Okay. We'll, we'll it, it'll get it'll, it'll get more difficult, honestly. But mm -hmm. we'll, we'll okay. So, so uh, in, in this this outlook that uh, we're discussing in this hearing, you examine a couple of different. Uh, policy alternatives and you analyze their impacts on the deficit. And you've got a table that summarizes it, the ones that increase the deficit, the ones that reduce the deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me which of those policy scenarios actually uh, have a uh, result in a declining deficit uh, uh, over the course of the forecast period? Uh, so we did, um, you know, we did a, a range of alternative scenarios, some with higher spending and some with lower spending. One of the ones that, that has lower is a lower path of spending freezes appropriations at the um, current level. And that reduces, um, it reduces de the deficit. You know, we looked just at, the, in that, that looks at just appropriations, um, which of course is not, not the biggest part of the, uh, of the deficit challenge. Yeah, discretionary but, um, spending, I think you call it in the- Yeah, in the, exactly, so, exactly. Okay, but, but if I'm reading it right, Although it reduced the deficit over the baseline, it did not reduce the deficit on an absolute basis. Is that correct? No, that that is correct. Um, okay, so so let me ask again: Which of these, on an absolute basis, which of the policy scenarios that you've laid out here in the outlook actually reduce the deficit in uh, you know on an absolute basis? Uh, okay, I mean, so one other one we did here. I'll mention two things: one we did in this report, and then one we'll have later, um, you know, by, by the end of the year. Is we looked at the um, the spending in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. That by the budget rules, that gets extended out through the um, uh, through the budget window. There's a box on page 77 of the report, which box 3-4, that goes through and shows the fiscal impact of that. And it's it's just mechanical through the budget rules. And so if that doesn't get extended, that would be substantial enough to reduce the um, budget deficit. You know, it's that okay, is not, not the long term. Not on an absolute challenge. basis, though. That I mean that change, if I'm understanding right, would not result in the budget deficit decreasing over time instead of increasing. Is that oh, right? That, that is correct. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So here, here's, here's, here's relative, the, crux, here's the, the crux of what I'm asking here is yeah. uh, why are we not examining policy alternatives mm -hmm. that result in an overall decline in deficit instead of an increase in deficit over time? If, as you say, we should be so concerned about this increasing deficit. No, oh, no, no. I, I, I agree. It's a, it's a grave concern, and we will have that for you later this year. So in it's probably December. We will have a, a new um, edition of our budget options volume that goes through a wide range of policies, and we will provide information on on policies that change the course and sort of change the shape of the river that okay. really make a big impact on um on the deficit. Right. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I wish that every outlook that you gave us mm -hmm. with these policy alternatives would include those. Uh, those alternatives, just to illustrate the gravity of the problem and uh, the magnitude of the changes that are going to be required to affect, you know, that trajectory. So, uh, you know, along those lines, let me ask about uh, something Congressman Feenstra mentioned: the the trust fund and their the uh, declining balances in the trust funds. And you go over that in page 125 and 126 of your outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, you say that uh, the outlook was prepared. Uh, with under the assumption that mandatory spending would continue regardless of the balance in the trust funds. But you also say on the previous page that the government has no legal authority to continue to expend anything uh, when the balance of the trust funds is exhausted other than the revenue that's coming in. So uh, those two 
uh, those two statements are in are intention. And, uh, and I'm wondering, why do we do it that way? Because we, we're saying we're, we're contradicting ourselves, you know, in, in the span of one page. No, I agree. There is a tension there. Um, and we're, we are following the budget rules. Um, and in some sense, that's why the, it's tables B1 and, uh, and B2 around the, the chapter that you, um, uh, you showed it is trying to provide that information. And it's, it's the Deficit Control Act that requires us to do it that way. And so we're trying to provide as complete information as we can, follow the law, and then provide the additional information to show the impact of that tension that you mentioned. All right. Well, I, I would encourage you to do that in the future. I see my time has expired. But, uh, you know, please, in, in the previous outlook, you had made plain that just attacking discretionary spending is not going to be sufficient to solve this problem. And that it's vital, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of your, your political party or political stance, it's going to be vital for us to get this under control. So we're going to have to take a look at those trust funds and what we're going to do as those balances decline and are exhausted. And I'd like to encourage you to please include those scenarios uh, as uncomfortable as that conversation might be, please include those scenarios in future outlooks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. Gentlemen's time.